In this video, we're going to do Active Directory integration with the SonicWall firewall. And make sure you stick around until the end, as I'll show you my personal cool things I like doing with Active Directory integration. Hi, I'm Jean-Pierre Talbot, SC for SonicWall in Canada, helping customer and reseller get the most out of their network security solutions. If you're new here, please make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Also, all the link to the content I'll mention will be in the description box down below. So let's get started. I personally like doing Active Directory integration in two steps. The first step I like doing is just simple LDAP, no LDAP S. So that way I can focus on making sure I haven't done any typo that connection works, I can import users, authentication works, that you know, everything works. Once I confirm this, then I go into my second step, which is just flipping this to LDAP S. So let's get going with simple LDAP. So first go into user and settings, change user authentication method for LDAP and local users and hit accept. Next click on configure LDAP and on add server, type in the address of your Active Directory server, change it from LDAP S to LDAP and turn off TLS. Here we're going to give it the admin credential of Active Directory. You may want to create a service account and give it the appropriate rights. For this, just look at documentation and you'll see what are the group membership that are needed. Here we're going to put my domain name and click on auto configure. And click save. And we see that communication is working. Next, we're going to go into local users and group and click on import from LDAP and click OK. Now we see all the groups. I will import them all, but you have the choice to import only the one you want. Then you can close this. And now we've imported all the groups that we have in Active Directory on the firewall itself. LDAP is highly insecured simply because username and password are sent in clear text. So now that we know that our LDAP integration works, it's now just an easy step to simply convert LDAP to LDAP S. Okay, now I need to export a certificate out of my Active Directory server. And in order to do this, you need to go into Certification Authority. Right click on your server, Properties, and View Certificate, Detail tab, and Copy File. Next, select the DER type and select the location where to export the file. And now we do have our certificate exported out of our domain controller. Next step is to log in into the firewall and import that cert in order for LDAP S to work. Now we go into device, certificate, import, select the DER type of cert and click on add file and select the file we just exported out of our domain controller. And it's success, so we can close this. We'll go see the certificate we imported and we can see that this certificate is for ad.murduson.ca. Next is to go into users and settings. Configure LDAP. We will edit the server we have, change it from LDAP to LDAP S and turn on TLS and hit save. Next step is to test it and you will see it will not work and I made that on purpose. See the error message we have, host name does not match CN as in peer certificate. So in order for this to work, we need to change it for the name of what we have in the cert, which in my case is ad.murduson.ca. But this is not going to work. We'll go have a look at DNS settings for the firewall. And we can see that I do have public DNS. So of course, public DNS won't be able to resolve this for me. So I'm going to add a DNS server for a specific domain name. So everything that is murdusson.ca, I'm going to tell the firewall that it needs to contact a specific DNS server, which is my local DNS server. 
and select on which interface it is. And close this. Next, we'll go back and configure LDAP and check that things are working. So we could hit refresh, it's up and running. We'll go back here and try to do a test of connectivity and it works. Next testing we can do is trying to give credentials for a user that exists with its password and click on test and we can see that it works. It also gave me the group membership for this user. Another test we can do is go back into local groups and click import and OK and see if it's able to pull groups. And as we can see, it's still successful. So now we confirm that our LDAP S conversion is actually working just like it was when it was with LDAP without an S. And finally, here is my own personal cool things I like to do with Active Directory integration. The first one, which I'll do a video on soon, is single sign on. Then I like doing also VPN authentication with Active Directory credentials and I'm about to do a video, you should see it soon in the description box down below. And finally, I love doing access rules based on Active Directory groups. I'll show you that. Here we do have a policy between two different zones where I can access a QNAP. And as you can see, it's standard policy from one zone to another to my QNAP on the SMB ports. But as you can see at the bottom where users are, I included a Active Directory group called the IT group. So in order to go through that policy, you must be authenticated as a user member of this group. Now I'm going to log out of the firewall. So now I am not logged in to the firewall as any user whatsoever. I'm going to try to access that, Q, that QNAP device. And as you can see, it does not work. Now I'm going to log in to the firewall as a user member of this IT group. As you can see, I got a message saying you're successfully authenticated. I'm logged in for 30 minutes by default. And as you can see, I'm able to log in and see the different files that are in there. So it's a great way to give you a quick access to something without having to go in the firewall and create access rules every time you need something. Okay, next, I want to create a policy to be able to manage my VoIP server through HTTP, but I do not want anyone except, again, the IT group to be able to manage and connect web to that VoIP server. It kind of sounds pretty much the same as the QNAP, but there's a cool feature I want you guys to see. So I'm going to log out. Again, now I'm not logged in as any user. I'm going to type in the IP address of the VoIP server, and as you can see, the firewall intercepted me. Now it's saying, hey, you need to authenticate to get there. So I'm going to click on the click here to log in. And I'm being asked to authenticate. And again, I put the same user credential. And now it says, congratulations, you're logged in. And it, it is redirecting me to the target server I wanted. So about the same thing, but because it's HTTP or HTTPS, it's going to intercept the authentication and actually allow me in. Here is another trick that I like. We all agree that if you want to do remote desktop from the outside, it's best to do a VPN. So I like to kind of create a backdoor to open remote desktop from the outside, but to have it gated with authentication to the firewall first. So for everyone outside, the port 3389 for remote desktop is not open. But if you want it to be open, you first need to authenticate to the firewall, then remote desktop will be open to you. In order to do this, it's pretty much the same concept as the previous policy. That is my inbound policy allowing remote desktop in. But as you can see, I have include the IT group. So remote desktop will work for users that have been authenticated that are a member of this group. One important aspect, it does not increase security over remote desktop. It still go unencrypted other than standard Microsoft encryption. It's just opening the port. So as you can see here, I'll try to connect, but I'm not authenticated to the firewall, so it doesn't work. Next, I will authenticate again as Bill because he's a member of that IT group. And I get the exact same message. You're authenticated, you have 30 minutes, and then I will click and have access to remote desktop. One important thing is to remember to turn on authentication on the interfaces in order for those three tricks to work.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed making it. If that's the case, give it a thumbs up and see you in the next one.